This was actually inspired by an episode of History 101 that I saw on Netflix. There's an episode about the space race, and there's a scene in that particular episode where uh, the USSR and America fire rockets at each other, and there's these cool little path animations where they're crisscrossing. The cool look that they created is like this 2D map that they have a path animate off of to create the 3D look. So that's what I'm gonna be playing around with today. I'm gonna show you what I came up with, um, the results of what I've been playing around with for the past day or two inside of Adobe After Effects. And if you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more map animations like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. So if you follow me on YouTube, clearly you're a fan of Adobe After Effects. Well, Skillshare is an online learning community with a ton of useful AE content available for motion designers. It doesn't really matter if you're a seasoned veteran or you're totally new to the program. Personally, I've always struggled with using the graph editor, so I'm taking Jake Bartlett's Animating with Ease class. The class focuses on how to use the speed and value graphs, how to properly perform overshoots, work with motion paths, and how to loop animations. In addition to the graph editor, you can also check out general motion design classes, how to do data visualizations, character rigging, and even how to properly run your freelance business. It's ad-free so you can stay focused on the content and they're always adding new premium content to the site. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link down in the video description are gonna get a one month free trial of Skillshare to start exploring your creativity today. All right, so this might be a long one so I'm gonna try to move relatively fast. All right, so this is a screenshot that I took of Google Maps. This is like my little world map that I'm gonna be working with here. So for the first step, I need to create like a launch pad area where all the elements are gonna come from. So let's go to Central Florida here. So I'm gonna attach a null layer there. So you can right click and go to new null object, but I'm using a premium extension uh, called Motion 3, and I'm sure a lot of you already own this tool. It's very, very powerful. So I'm gonna be using this to do a lot of my animation work. So right up here, I can click on null. That gives me this null. I'm gonna call the null layer launch pad. And then I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm actually gonna move this to Eastern Central Florida where the actual launch pads are in the United States for like SpaceX and NASA. Uh, fun fact, I actually was born in a little city called Titusville. That's like 12 miles from the actual launch pads. So I lived there for over 30 years, saw all the space shuttle launches, it was super cool. All right, so I'm gonna parent the null object launch pad to the map. And now everything will attach to that launch pad null object. And when I animate the world map around it, everything will be cool. So uh, one quick note, I wanna get all of my elements together in a 2D space before I jump over and start um, tinkering with things and layers in 3D space, because then you add that third dimension and it opens up a whole world of like new issues. So it's easier to rig everything up in 2D space. At least I find that workflow to be easy. So the next thing I wanna create here is the flight path of the rocket. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool, I'm gonna to turn the fill off, and I'm gonna turn the stroke on. And the stroke is set to a width of two, color of white, that's fine. And I'm just gonna draw out a quick path, um, something like the start point, and then a little end point, so we have like a little curved path here. I'm gonna rename the layer, flight path. So I wanna be able to manipulate this layer, um, I wanna be able to rotate it, and move it in 3D space. So to do that, if I want it to attach to my flat 2D map, I want the anchor point of this particular layer to be attached to where the launch pad is. I'm gonna go grab the pan behind tool, and I'm gonna grab the anchor point of my flight path layer. And a really cool tip is if you hold control, it'll actually snap to your paths in your bounding box. And now I'm gonna parent the flight path to the launch pad. And another cool tip is when you're parenting things, if you want to overwrite the child parameters with the parent parameters, like for instance, if you want the position, if you want to snap to that position, just hold shift. So I'm gonna grab the pick whip and I'm gonna shift and then release on the launch pad and it'll snap that anchor point there. If I control Z, I'm gonna show you one other tip. Um, if I drag this over and then I zoom in, if I want it to snap on there, I just hold the control key and it should snap into position there. All right, now we need to create like a little spacecraft or our rocket. For that, I'm gonna go grab the polygon tool. I'm gonna to turn the fill back on to solid and I'm gonna turn the stroke off and I'm gonna draw out a shape here. Now I already have a triangle. Now the, one of the ways you control the polygons of the polygon tool is you hit the up and down arrow as you're clicking and dragging and it's gonna change the number of points. So I have the triangle here. I am going to sh hold shift to make sure it's 
uh, aligning it like this. Then I'll bring it down, make it small. Okay, so now I'm gonna center this up by going to the transformation properties. I'll quickly zero this out, and that puts it in the center. And then I'm gonna grab the layer, rename it Rocket, and then with Motion 3, I'm gonna set the anchor point to the bottom center because I want that to be the attach point when it's attaching to my flight path and I'm manipulating it. I wanna manipulate it from the back end of it. So that's our next step. I need to connect the rocket to the flight path and have it animating along the flight path. So how the heck are we gonna do that? Well, there's a really cool tool called Create Nulls from Paths. So if you go to Window, right down here, it says Create Nulls from Paths. So this was a, an extension introduced into After Effects in, I think, 2018. So if you're using an older version, you might not see it. This is gonna allow us to animate a null object that moves along the path. So I actually have to select the path of my flight path, and I actually have to grab it and then hit Trace Path. And that created this new null object right here, and it's actually animating along the path now. But you'll notice that it's looping. So if I hit the U key, you can see that there's keyframes here. And if I go to Effect Controls, you'll notice there's Trace Path with a progress bar that goes from 0 to 100 and a loop. So if I turn off loop and then I move this keyframe here, I'm gonna move this all the way to the end. What that's gonna do is that's gonna animate the null from 0 to 100 along our path. So that's gonna be the control of like where our rocket is, how it's launching. So these two keyframes are what I'm gonna animate for the movement of my rocket launch. Now I wanna attach my rocket to this. So I'm gonna grab the rocket, hold shift, and parent that to that, and then voila, I've got this rocket moving along here. However, it's sideways. So I'm gonna go hit R for rotate, and just move that 90 degrees, and now you've got that flying along the path. Now, however, um, let's say I want the path to animate on behind the rocket. For that, I'm gonna go to flight path, and I'm gonna add a trim paths. And I have the start and end parameters here. You can see end goes from zero to 100. So we need to animate the end from zero to 100. Now I could hand keyframe that, but our progress bar of our trace path is already animating on from, you guessed it, zero to 100. So I can just attach or property pick whip the end of the trim path to the progress bar of the trace path, and it's that easy. Okay, so Everything's all rigged up in 2D world here. Actually, I forgot one element. There's a really cool uh, shockwave explosion element that I got from Premium Beat here. This is a free element. If you wanna check it out, um, you can go down to the video description and there's a link to download a bunch of free explosion elements. So I wanna use this as like the rocket blast off. I want this shockwave to happen. So what I'm gonna do here is, well, first I'm gonna move this anchor point because it's not in the right position. So I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna move it right to the center. That's gotta be a mistake. Now I can shift and parent this to the launch pad, and then tack, that's gonna snap right there. And then I'm gonna move the shockwave element just above the map and scale it down to 15. All right, it's a good start. Okay, now we're gonna start messing with some 3D stuff. So let's just dive right in. And I'm gonna turn all these layers to 3D. Tick, 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 tick. And let's watch the carnage unfold. You notice two things right away. The rocket's now gone, and the null object for the trace path is just totally not in the right position now. I didn't know what was going on here. This is a pretty complex error, and it's with the fact that the, tra the way trace paths, um, the expression is working in space, uh, in the space world of After Effects. So. I found the answer to this problem on a forum in Creative Chaos. This guy named Benjamin figured it out. So what you do is you open up the position um, of the trace paths null object, and then down here it's set to, to comp. So you just delete comp and you say world, and then bang, everything will work in the 3D world now. So what does that mean? What did I just do? I don't know. If you'd like to find out why, buy the power of expression at anyscripts.com affiliate link in the video description. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my playhead over here, and I'm just gonna grab the camera tool, which is C, and I'm gonna quickly like rotate, whoops, I'm gonna grab the world map, and I'm gonna rotate down like this. Okay, so now you can see we've got this flat 2D map. Um, you can see everything's flat here. So if I grab the flight path, you can see, once again, I have the anchor point here. So all I need to really do here is I'm gonna rotate the map so I can see it a little better here. 
And now I'm going to grab the flight path and I'm going to rotate this right here. So now I'm going to bring this up. And now as I rotate around again, you can see that we now have the 3D path coming off of a 2D map. However, there's a problem. Check this out. If I look at the rocket, the rocket is uh, looking a little wonky. It's not right rotation wise. So it's um, kind of like the path coming up like this and it's attached like this. This can be very complex as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rocket and I just want to attach the position. Uh, right now it's parented. All the attributes are parented to the trace path null. I want to attach just the position to that so I can control the rotation of the rocket um, separately from the trace paths. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unparent the rocket. And then I'm going to go over to rotation and I'm just going to zero out all this stuff. So we still have path like this. Now I'm going to grab position of both trace path and rocket and I'm going to shift click to make sure that's still connected. Now I just need to go to the rocket, right click, go to transform and then auto orient that to follow along the path. Now you can see if I mess with the X rotation here, all I need to do is set this to negative 90. Okay, so now this is launching and the arrow is working well in 3D space here. I gotta be honest, that took me a long time to figure that out. All right, so now I just need to do like some final touches. I'm gonna go to the path here. I can change this, add some dashes to it, you know? There's some dashes. I can go to the rocket and um, let's actually, you know, bring the size of this down. It's much too big. So I'm gonna go to the radius here, the outer radius, turn that down to 15 or 10. And I can actually have this spin. So if I want like this to you know, spin endlessly, I can go to the Y rotation and I can just add a keyframe here, keyframe here, and then have it rotate one time for one second. You can see it's like, and now we just add a loop out expression, loop out. And now this thing, this rocket is gonna spin around. These astronauts are gonna be so sick. And let's just throw a deep glow on there. Ting. Deep glow is another premium tool um, from Plug and Everything. Awesome, awesome tool. Let's bring the radius down to like 250. I'm gonna actually animate this on because you can see down here we have this issue of it like intersecting. If you know uh, what's causing that or the workaround from these layers intersecting, I would love to learn about that because I don't know I don't know how to solve that problem. So if you could tell me like how to do it, because the way I'm gonna get around this is I'm gonna scale up the rocket. So I'm just gonna scale here and have this scale up just to avoid um, the intersection of that. And I'm gonna go to the trace pass here and I'm gonna have the rocket, you know, ease in or ease out, I mean. And you know what, I'm gonna go down to flight path and we'll bring the stroke, make it real thin like one. All right, cool. Now I've got this animating well. Now I'm gonna get a position for my camera so I can animate the camera. So one quick tip, if you're working in 3D space, you select a layer and you can use the tools to navigate, navigate around that particular layer. So I'm gonna come up like somewhere like around here so that it flies by here. And I'm gonna go rotate the map a little bit. Let's rotate the map like this. And I want to create like a fake, like it's a globe or something, or like we're in space. So I can double click on the world map and I'm gonna grab the pin tool and I'm just gonna create a quick mask. Make it looks like there's some fall off. I'm gonna invert this mask or I'm gonna subtract and then I'm gonna feather it out a lot. So we're giving it like this fake. There we go. Maybe bring it over even more. I'm doing this in the layer panel, so I double click the layer and it brings me into the layer panel here. All right, so what I can do now is I can go to layer, camera, create camera from 3D view. So right now I don't have my 3D camera, it's just the default view. So now I can create this camera here and I want the camera to follow the rocket. So as the rocket moves, I want it to automatically follow the rocket. So I can go to point of interest right here and I want that to snap to the position of my of my trace path. So right here, I'll grab point of interest and then shift click that and hopefully that will work. Yeah, so now it's doing the animation for us. And now to really make it nice, I'm gonna turn depth of field on 
And then I'm gonna grab the camera and the rocket, left click, I mean right click, go to camera, link focus distance to layer. So as that rocket flies, the, the focus is automatically gonna rack. So as it comes and gets higher in the atmosphere, um, it should give us a shallow depth of field. It should blur out the planet. And to make it blur out a little more, I can turn that aperture up. Is that working? Yeah, it is working. I crank it way up. This is why it's important to learn your camera terminology. And let's actually see if I can um, front. Let's see if I can mess with this flight path a little more. The flight path just isn't long enough. Like I want it to be further. So I think I can mess with it here. So if I grab it here and I bring it like way out here, let's see what happens. And the cool thing is the camera is going to follow it. Everything should follow it theoretically. I don't know if I should keep messing with the aperture or if I should mess with the blur level. Let's look at camera options again. Blur level 200%. Yeah. Let's do 150%. I really love the link focus to camera and linking linking the point of interest to the the null is just such a cool technique because look at that it automatically gives you just does so much work for you like you don't have to keyframe anything and one other cool effect um, I could just quickly so now it's launching here let's say we wanted to do like this snap zoom in like right here I could grab the zoom and then I can just zoom. Now just make sure I've got motion blur on for everything. Now go to effects and presets and let me add like a hue saturation to my world map. And uh, let's just totally desaturate it to give it this cool look. There we go. Maybe even turn the opacity down some. Make that rocket pop out a little bit. Make it look a little bit better. And if you want, you could go in here and add um, a light, like a, let me see, a parallel light. And that's gonna give us like a, hopefully give us a shadow. So if I go here, you gotta actually select all your layers and make sure that shadows are turned on. So cast shadows. And you can see it's making my rocket path all dark. So what I could do is I could go to the flight path and just go to material options and you don't want it to accept lights but you want it to cast the shadow so same thing with a rocket Let's see if I set lights off all right so there you have it I hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did be sure to hit the thumbs up button I had so much fun with this I'm probably gonna be tinkering around with this idea for the next couple of weeks or days or whatever just because it's it's just looks so cool it's so much fun there's so many things you can do with it um, in addition to like just rocket or missile launches let me know what you think of it down in the comments section I'm thinking I might try something with video copilot or plugin or have it like launch off an actual globe and like maybe I could have it circle the globe or something actually do like an a real flight path of a SpaceX rocket or something. Also, I've been doing a lot of freelance work. Um, I did some projects, some more projects for Johnny Harris, um, some cool World War II maps that I'll probably be doing breakdowns of in the future. I've been working with a YouTuber called Ava Zubek, been doing some map animations from her. I did some map animations for Terra Mater. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go over there and follow me at Boonlo's Video. I've been sharing samples there. It's really, really cool. And if you want to see something specific, um, just give me a shout in the comment section and maybe we can make something happen. This tutorial is like 45 minutes. I'll see you in the next one.